hello, hello. I am at a place that I remember coming to in approximately 2009-ish called Foxlight. Aviation technology and high-tech plastics. <laughs> they might not like me too much because I talk a lot about my dislike for touching plastic things. There we go. Isn't that cute? I like the logo very much. I like the little fox. Did you ever see a real fox in person? And to show my support, I have one of those shirts on. It's long sleeve. Maybe I'll take it off before I get in the car. It's a little chilly out today, so I have my jacket on over top. But I still wear my shirt. I forget when I got it exactly, but uh, probably when I came out here in 2009-ish or 2010, um, I needed something to wear to kind of stay warm whenever we went somewhere because it gets kind of a little bit chillier out here over the winter and fall months. And even in spring, there's a little bit of summer. I don't really want to show the whole establishment. I wanted to kind of capture this for myself because this was one of my favorite places to come, one of them, when the person I was staying with uh, would ask me if I wanted to go along with, or they, they would say, come on, come, come along, come with me. I'm going to run over to Fox Slide. Sometimes it was, I think, to drop something off, or whether it be paperwork or something else, or maybe it was to meet up with somebody uh, that somehow was associated with this facility. I ain't gonna show any video through the window, but I'll probably walk up myself to kind of look in. Uh, and, and then I'll kind of stand back across the street and get a little bit of video on it. I originally thought, for some reason, it's stuck in my head that they do uh, metals. And I've been having a lot of problems and I just thought of this now, but I, was, I, I had a lot of problems in the recording studio recently with what is called, some people call it a tremolo bar, I call it a whammy bar, but basically some people call it a vibrator bar, a vibration bar, vibro, the vibro bar, but it's a bar on an electric guitar that when you strike a note or chords or what have you, do her, what they call harmonics, you can flex, this gives you the ability to flex the strings, correct? For the longest time when I was playing it, there's a lot of play in it, and I didn't really know who to call, who to talk to, to have a special one made. And I was thinking some time of coming in here to find out what they would charge <laughs> to have one of the bars custom made for me. Custom made. And I never thought it could be made in plastic, okay, but I have thought of different ways I would have liked it to be if it was metal. The, the main thing that I wanted to have achieved, which could be possibly made with plastic, I don't know, but there's play in the bar that goes in, that it sits in, and when it does that, there's a little bit of play before there's actually contact and then the strings actually start to move. So in other words, me being who I am would like it that if I just touch the whammy bar, the strings would move instantly. There would be an instant response to the touch of the whammy bar rather than first there's a little bit of slack. A good way to explain it, for anybody who drove classic cars before in the past, there's that play, okay? And then we got into the newer technology with cars, instant. Now some people like that play. Do you like, are you one of those that like the classic steering wheels? Da, 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 da. You know, so, did you ever have a car with classic play or ever drive in a pickup truck uh, that had a lot of play? <laughs> but you drove it anyway and you happened to like that play? <laughs> well, you get kind of used to it after a while. And then the steering wheel had uh, the three, the three bars or what have you, and then they had the three little places for horns, is that it? Or they have the big metal, uh, like, half moon horn. <laughs> Did it ever fall off? <laughs> so, anyway, I was just thinking here when I was here, 
Uh, on my whammy bar, I have a pair of heels that I used to wear when I was an entertainer of a certain kind. And I still have these heels that were got as a gift for me when I was in, on Hollywood Boulevard. So back in 2000, and it was either 10-ish or prior to that, someone very kind had uh, gone out with me on Hollywood Boulevard. I was excited because I found out by talking to different people that they probably have heels, shoes, boots, my size. And I get really excited about it when I can actually try them on and make sure they work. Like, do they fit? Is that how you say it? Do my shoes, do these shoes work for me? <laughs> do they fit? Is there play in them? Not the kind of play some people would be thinking of. Is there play in these shoes? <laughs> because you want them to what? Fit. And, and something I used to look forward to ever since I was born and I could was getting my shoes fitted by the shoe. When I used to watch Ow on Married with Children, I used to have uh, memories of when all my life that we used to go to different shoe stores and we would meet the shoes people and they would go in the back and they would get the boxes and they would come out and they would help you put your shoes on. You don't really want me to talk about what I think about going to get shoes today, do you? According to a lot of people, that would be negative and it would be disappointing to hear that come from you. You could hurt a lot of people. Shoes for me today to get in the midst of my circumstances. Not so easy as to fly to California and walk down Hollywood Boulevard and walk into many different stores and talk to different personalities. And the one that becomes one of your more favorite places to go through all that, you can get shoes that actually fit. And for anybody who wants to know, okay, I might not be a genetic girl, Psychologically, I think um, it, it's more, uh, it's a little bit much different than our worldly genetics. Psychological DNA, is it? <laughs> it's much different than bodily DNA and probably truer <laughs> to all the biologists, scientists, and all the other people that have this figured out through DNA, blood, and all that other stuff. I was thinking of taking some of the white diamonds off the heel. They're not real diamonds, though. I thought someday I would have a pair of heels or shoes with a real diamond in it. Or diamonds. Because my heel, I don't know what size it is right now, I forget, but kind of has like a mirror-ish silver heel on the back of the black heel. And then all around it, it has these white diamonds. Okay, they're not real white diamonds, I don't think so. <laughs> that would be cool if I found out they were. The government would probably be there confiscating them. <laughs> so I was thinking it would be really cool if I could take a couple of those and put them onto a personalized tremolo bar. Embedded into the bar so that when I was playing my guitar like live or something, or in the studio, and every time I grabbed it, it would be kind of like uh, something that was a serious part of my life for quite a while and a memory memories Many of them kind of like all happening at once like they were being designated into my mind every time I touch that and I bend my strings or I do something with that tremolo bar psychologically all this overlapping of memories perceived as the good ones <laughs> Not the bad the good ones the funny ones even the day that I got them, California, Los Angeles, right? Even the day I got them, it would all be happening at once while I'm playing guitar. That being said, Fox Light, and I always liked the Fox. The shirt is still like brand new. <laughs> so I was trying to preserve it. <laughs> but I've been wearing it in my studio because I get cold Kind of, I get cold kind of easily. My apartment's very warm. It actually gets a little bit too warm, but I get chilly very easily. So I started to put on, even when I had the central air on in my apartment a while back, I would still put on a long sleeve shirt to kind of keep my body at a nice temperature because I like when I'm working in the studio, I cover up with blankets. 
I kind of get snuggled up because it's a lot of sitting down and working by a desk. So for all those people who work in offices, I would describe what I do in the recording studio more similar to that position. Pick one. I sit down at a desk for as long as I can stand it. <laughs> and that's how my music comes into what they call manifestation. Okay, the details of my music. I comb through each note. And I do the best to keep things moving along because I'm thinking tick, tick, life, life. <laughs> you know, my whole idea from everything that I've ever gathered in life is I don't really understand, but it appears that it should happen a lot faster and it should be a hell of a lot more fun. And the reality of it is I don't want to talk about it now. I've been working in my studio for the last two years and nine months. And I'm only now starting to get to the tweaking phase of the last 25 songs I recorded. And then when you have a person from the military is what appears to be a Fed agent, worker, a government official, somebody, looking at you in the eyes and saying, what does it matter where you live? And what does it matter, period? What does it matter where you play? Why don't you, you just want to play, right? I mean, that's it, you just want to play, so it shouldn't matter. I'd rather not get on that subject. You might not have all the answers that day, but God will start to show everybody it matters. The details matter. This seemed to be a company that was very precise, and it seemed like they were perceived to me by people that were I don't know the right words, but bringing something into existence based off of things that they were believing would work for various projects that they were working on, for whatever reason that was. It seemed very interesting, so I used to like to come with the gentleman I was staying with, and we ended up moving in to one of the people's houses uh, that somehow was associated with. I don't know how they were associated. Exactly. But I did know that they were friends with the person I was staying with. And I was very grateful to meet them. And whenever the person would come here, okay, a lot of it was to keep me from being depressed and in bed. Because I was that depressed, it was hard for me to get up. Okay, I was pretty much psychologically, I felt devastated over circumstances that I was enduring. With that being said, I would say that even accordance to federal standards, I would be perceived as somebody who was seriously, major depressed. Okay, not angry, depressed, suicidal, wishing I was dead. Rather than leaving me home alone, <laughs> with the wine <laughs> because I used to love to drink White Zinfandel a lot and I'm looking forward to it though I don't drink that much anymore hardly at all I still like a watery down <laughs> White Zinfandel okay I'm not big into the alcohol part but it doesn't take much for me either <laughs> but I've been wanting to get champagne to celebrate uh, what will be when I'm ready to three years of recording. Coming up by about Valentine's Day. It started January 23rd, 2019 and I'm still, finally, I'm done recording and editing the main songs. Now I'm kind of blending them together for an album and it turned out as it did. I love them though, a lot. And I never listened to anybody else's music in my whole life as much as I listen to mine every day. It's a CD mainly in my car. Um, I always watch music videos when I'm doing stuff around my home or I'm exercising, especially on the treadmill. I still do that once in a while. And I love to watch my music videos. Sometimes when I'm driving, not too much. So once in a while, I put them on my window and watch as I'm driving. And I just really... Can I tell you that through the process of all this, do you know who I find the most interesting human being in the world? <laughs> I find myself the funniest at times, 
especially when I have the right outfit on and it's the right lighting, the sexiest <laughs> in many ways. God has taught me in many ways the lost lust over other human beings and those psychologically who evidently get it <laughs> lust no further than their cells and know that it's a sin but it's a hell of a lot nicer and better and healthier than looking at others thinking those thoughts so the thoughts that I used to once think for others and I'm talking about as I went through life okay now those thoughts they're meant for me and if you're not in the top of valuable people in my life like really valuable in my opinion psychologically most likely you would never fall in that category if I was being faithful and true to God in my brain God in your brain God in our brains funny thing about asking Jesus into your heart are we talking about this heart are we talking about psychological being that God is Word and Word is God in the beginning? Did I say it reverse? Does it matter? Word in the beginning, Word was God and God was Word. I'm filled up sometimes <laughs> with at least what I talk to myself about <laughs> or scream. Because if the Bible really is the book of truth, then that would make very possible everything I've ever thought was impossible and everything I ever dreamed and thought that's all it's ever going to be can very much so be my reality. Which means for all people, not just Tracy Lynn Michael. Why is there not a more heavenlier presence consuming what we call the world and transforming it into something much, 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 much more sweeter to live? It's frustrating, isn't it? Because we would park somewhere up front here. Probably right where I'm standing. Sometimes we get out of the car. Sometimes he would go alone and sometimes I would be offered, come on. And we would go inside and down the building. It reminded me of a place that I used to work that was for powder coating. I can't explain it. <laughs> But the one thing that I was very grateful for back then was that I was not working for a large corporation. If for any other reason, because a lot of the conversation I was aware of by other people who worked for a large corporation, I kind of wanted a little bit more of a family environment in the place that I worked with back then, kind of a little bit, okay? Business is business and it made it feel a little bit more family. The difference is when you realize what's going on in your head, obviously working for another man isn't good at all. It isn't what's God's best. So with that being said, I don't I want to halt with that. So when I used to go in here, I used to have flashbacks a little bit and I remember. So I was fully aware of like working with different metals because I worked in different foundries. This is plastic and I'm not really putting it fully together. Even today, I wasn't sure because I was thinking about getting that metal piece for my guitar. As far as I know, it's metal. And I was going to come by and I was going to ask him about that. And then I started realizing plastic. Plastic is what I have been complaining about. This whole time I was recording. I have plastic on my hands with my mouse all day long that I'm working in the studio. A lot of plastic. I don't really remember what was going on at the time, so I don't really want to talk about the details about the inside of the place, but I had a lot of memories. I looked forward to it, coming here at least 50% of the time. Because I really wanted to come, but depending on what was going on, I might not want to come here. Do you get it? Sometimes two people can be together, and for whatever reason you want them to go ahead. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, sometimes even with your siblings, like if my brothers or sisters were going to go somewhere I didn't always want to go with, sometimes I'd be like, no, everybody go, and then I get the apartment to myself. And as soon as I close the door, hooray! <laughs> Take your time! <laughs> I 
wanted to share this with myself because I've been wearing this and I've been thinking the whole time I was in the studio with this that some of the nicer people that I met coming out here, one of them was Walt and his wife Anne. They really touched my life in many ways and if for any other reason, simply being nice. Let me give hugs and we got to live in their house that they lived at. I don't know if they were the only owners of the house, the second owners. I got to live in their home because they moved on to another place and I got to live there for a little while and it is what sheltered me during my times that I was going through in 2010, 11, 12, and even into 13, and I think 14. <laughs> and and don't, 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 don't think less of me. I would encourage you to think less of the leadership of our country, that I didn't know what else to do. Because the famous statement of, go get a job, doesn't work when you want to live and take care of yourself. You're in a world that you pay $45,000 for a car like that. I always like this driveway when you come in. Off the road, you turn in. You can either go to the left or you can go to the right to park. So, to be quite honest with you, I do not know the details of what it is that they do as a business. So you might want to check it out. I don't know if they do mass productions of things or if they develop the forms, new forms. You think so? So you kind of find that interesting. Can we use the same plastic and create it into many different forms, kind of like words in many different heads? I used to back up when I drove truck to docks. And I can tell that this would have been one I would rather come to early in the morning when there was no traffic, or to park alongside the road here with my four ways and then ask them if they would stop traffic. <laughs> I don't know if they could actually pull the semi-truck in here or not. I'm kind of swinging it around. See, I used to do stuff like that. To the dock. Okay, this is where I stop. I want to go check things out. And then I am ready to go. Skylights. Evidently, I guess they like yellow a lot. And that seems to be kind of like the local color. So. But the house that I stayed in, I thought. It was my first time actually staying at a place. How sad. So I don't think there was one in the first trailer we lived in 1972. I'm not sure about that, but I'm almost positive. I never lived anywhere with that. And the second home in Huber Heights also had one. And I remember thinking to myself that when it comes to the depression state, because for a very long time, I stayed in hotels often. For a very long time, I didn't necessarily get to choose a hotel room because of the awesome view. Look how beautiful this is. Did you ever see cartoons? <laughs> it's just copying a cartoon, that's all, right? I still have my wits about things. So one thing that I thought was really cool, I'm gonna get some video of that when I get into my car because it's down the road a little bit. I wanted to show a railroad bed that's behind here because it's pretty decent. Now, here's the thing. Check this out. Ta-da! Here we go. Champ? Uh-oh. I can't do it that way as much. See, hold on. It actually fits. And it's made of some really nice material. So that's probably why it lasts as long as it did. Um, when I came out here, the person I was staying with was very kind in this regard. Um, I could have any clothing within that was pointed out to me that I could have. So I needed much at that time because I dressed for different reasonings prior to living in Dayton. And when you're pretty much living on the road, in the same car... Ta-da! That's my baby. Yeah. When people tell you to be more positive and optimistic, do they have cars with paint jobs like this? Because what's one
one started, and I think I have videos on my uh, music video, uh, FTMS. If you look at the hood of the car, you will see what appears to be an Elvis hood. In my opinion, that came from somebody who's an artist. Evidently way up there. And before you know it, evidently there's also others who have access. If your clear coat or your paint job seems to be fading from the weather or age, know this. There are very, very, very corrupted somethings. Most people then would what? Utilize their finances to go out and either buy another vehicle or have work done to it. Evidently there's something very jealous out there that does not want me to be with nobody. Especially if you notice that you seem to be home a lot earlier than your mommy and daddy used to during your very early years into the world. Alright, I want to show you this really cool <laughs> railroad bed, okay? And then away we go. Foxlight. By the way, the person here at Foxlight, Walt, was also in relation to the Wright B. Flyer Museum. Um, I don't know if he was a member or not. I'm, I'm assuming most likely. And especially around the holidays, always, since I've been working in the studio, I've been thinking, I really take what I'm doing very serious, and I don't take that much time for me while I'm recording to do some of the things I think of, but I think... If I could catch up to a certain point or I wasn't recording right now, I would love to give people a call that are still associated there because I would love to go to like a family meal that they have for the holidays and stuff. I went once or twice and I liked it. They have kind of lots of food. I think Walt used to uh, volunteer for it and his wife, I'm sure. Um, people volunteer bring food that they prepared and it was really cool to go and enjoy a meal, even though you might not know a whole lot of people. Like, I didn't know a whole lot of people. I knew of a lot of people. And I saw that the Wright B Flyer, they have what appears to be another one, and it's white. And one thing that I really wanted to do at some point, back in 2010-ish or prior, um, and then I never did, and that crossed my mind as I was hoping they, for members, you could also get a flight with one of the planes. I wanted to do that, and then I never did. And I don't want to talk a whole lot about that right now, but with what happened at some point, um, you know, I, I just want to say that I myself, I don't have fear with that myself. I thought maybe not actually riding on it or in it, but um, maybe actually going and seeing it fly. I think that would be really cool. So if anybody sees this video and the Wright B Flyer, the new one, the white one that they have, um, they're doing, I guess, test flights. They have to do so many man hours of test flights. Whenever it gets flown in the future and people are allowed to be there and you're one of those people, um, maybe we could meet up there. Huh? I'm talking about over the next few years because I'm going to be working in this studio. I don't know how long I'll be in Ohio because obviously I have been thinking very strongly that I would like to wrap some things up here and move back to Pennsylvania, where I'm from. To know what I know, I believe that what I learned, I believe it's very, very beneficial for life for me to share my life witnessing what I witnessed. And I believe that the viewer benefits greater if they remain impartial and only hear through their focus on anything that's beneficial for life inside of their own brain. I would tell people as you're watching my videos, consider where you are being, forget anyone else, being honest to yourself. When you're honest to yourself, listen to the videos and there is a God and you'll be able to see that which is beneficial for compatible and similar interests. I was starting to catch on at LCBC, the church I used to go to, in, in like 2000-ish, up until, you know, 2000. I think I even went a couple times in 2010, 11, and 12. I think I did. And 13, I think I did. Uh, not often, but in the beginning I did. You know, I was very committed to the church. And I'm very grateful I was, and I was starting to slowly pick up that 
what I'm talking to you about. So anyway, with that being said, I just want to say that I'm glad that this place still is. I hope that they are successful in many ways, especially in their personal lives. It always seemed uh, kind of like the environment, maybe because the time that we would come here throughout the day, it seemed kind of not so busy. I, never, I don't remember seeing office workers, maybe one time. But I didn't really see staffs of people. We usually, when we came, we seen one or two people. Or I waited in the car. And then, you know, the person I was with did whatever they needed to. And it's really neat because when I go back in time, when I first came here and I used to wait in the car, I used to th look around and think, sometime it would be cool to go inside the building. And the very last time that I was here, I got to go inside the building. And actually it was for a while and it was deep into it. And it was an opportunity for me to look around and hear about some of the molds and different things that I, either they're working with or make. I'm very passionate about, I think skylights are heavenly. And maybe they should have a heavenly series of some sort with names that are heavenly, you know. Um, and the reason I say that is because a lot of people think looking up is heavenly. And God showed me much depends, but some people can look down. And acknowledge heavenly. I think that's romantic. That's the word I've been using here lately. Okay, they're intimate. When you're in your home, you get to look up and the light that shines in your home. It depends on, you know, do you want it through your house or, you know, just a certain room or, you know what I mean? Too much can be too much too. But I, I really like them a lot and I think for homes, when used tastefully, they really brighten up. And uh, it helps for people who in darker atmospheres, which is where I was in a lot of throughout life often, I started to catch on when I came out here to Beaver Creek um, because of this. You see the, the whitish? I like an off-white is what I learned. It's kind of like an almond, I guess. But it's not brown or nothing like that. That's when I, it's kind of confusing that it is almond because I don't know necessarily what color almonds are. Maybe I should look, but um, white, like an off-white. I would tell people I like an off-white color, not the bright white, um, but like an off-white. So it kind of looks dirty and a little. And that's how my apartment is now. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the homes I was staying in was that. So I come from a life of living in darkened rooms. And uh, sometimes we don't really understand environment like we should. I love all colors, and I love black, obviously, a lot, too. But if I were to be all in black, depending, for too long of a period of time, it would affect my psychological. And I'm starting to realize that I'm talking on about a lot of different things, and I don't want to do that. Uh, that can be continued. If anybody ever has questions or anything, you could ease their things. Uh, you know what I would tell people? Um, if they wanted to get together with me today, how much of my videos have you been exposed to? That's number one. What do you know about me? before you even start to talk to me. Because even when I meet people out and about, sometimes I'll give a business card. Sometimes I'll give a music desk. Obviously, look, I'm not lying. See the eject? Ta-da! I listen to it all the time. It's warm. Ah, ah CD. Warm. Sometimes it's really hot, so be careful with that. <laughs> it might not be good. I'm not teaching people to do that, okay? <laughs> uh, make sure that it's not extremely hot when you do that. But here's the thing, check this out. My DVD. Um, depending, especially if it's perceived to me as a man, I might give a DVD. And the reason is, because I have a lot of my music videos on there and I think I have a couple of what I perceive, my model videos. I don't like to constantly, especially on the spot, explain the details of what the person is looking at. <laughs> the reflection of God up here in my brain. And I've just learned that I, okay, can offer these knowing that if the person's really interested, then they took time at least. If I met somebody and I was interested, 
I would probably that day, that's how I am, I most likely that day I would go home and or in my car or whatever and I would start to look. And especially I would set time aside or something. Maybe not even that day, but probably before I would contact them. Whether it was a few months, a few weeks, a few days. So I started to make them and I also wanted to, if there was people I wanted to be in connection with, just period. It's not always like I'm sharing my whole life testimony. But let's face it, we were raised in a world, psychologically, that a person with a body part is this person, and a person without that body part is this person. And then we have the details taught to us, shown to us, revealed to us, on most likely which, what we should form ourselves into. With that being said, I struggled with this not only for a few days, a few weeks. I didn't just see somebody and wow. In fact, if you listen to my life story, you'll find some pretty bizarre stuff. It was the largest contribution to me feeling as an outcast my whole life. Um, today is different than yesterday. It's different than since 1972. Now I realize that if a human being starts to come into intelligence alone, starts to separate them from the entirety of the human race making it difficult for us to communicate because I'm talking based out of my knowledge, wisdom of things gone through while reading the Bible and studying psychology. And when I'm listening to you talk or you're talking to me, I'm assuming that is pretty much from watching TV, radio, and the American school system not even paid for most likely, which means that you probably did not go to a private school or a private tutor, which means all the more reason I need the love of Jesus Christ with me as I understand you may never understand me when I speak or rarely understand what I'm really trying to say. And when you speak, I always feel sorry for myself. This is why if there's a God's government somewhere in the world, until you show me another way, I need my own money. I work for nobody. I don't understand what they say or understands me.